All right, for CPU removal, you're going to want to unplug your computer, shut it down, and then <clears throat> you want to remove your battery by flipping on these two tabs here. And the battery's going to tip out like this. <clears throat> then you want to take off your back cover, which is also that releases the back cover. That just pulls off like so. Next, you're going to want to take out the hard drive. So you're going to be two Phillips head screws right here. One, two. And you open this cover up. The screws are cap captured. And then to take out the hard drive, there's this little tab. It's going to be tucked under this here, that metal. I already untucked it. Then you're going to want to take out these screws. There's one, or loosen these screws. One here, one here, one here. Three of them. And then you pull sideways. There's your hard drive. Okay, next you're going to want to remove the optical drive, your DVD drive. Sit right here. And uh, come over here and loosen these two screws. This one screw right here. And this screw there. Then you're going to want to take a screwdriver and push on this little tab here. Check and see if I can do this one handed. There it goes. And your optical drive will come out. Alright, the next thing you can do is remove the keyboard, which is three screws. One of them I already loosened when I took out the uh, optical drive. That's right here. You can see the little symbol for keyboard. Then there's another one here. And another one right there. So loosen all those screws. All right, next you're gonna take out the keyboard. You want to uh, set your laptop up like this here on the side. And there's a hole right here you can push on. You'll be pushing on the back of the keyboard. And you can also, at the same time, use a little pry and tool. See, I'll push on the keyboard with my finger here. See how it's moving? That'll give you a little space to get your tool in there, and then you can pry up on the keyboard there and kind of loosen it all along the edge here. It's going to come out. Okay, so what you're trying to do when you get your keyboard out, it's uh, snapped in on the top here. So once you get one of those released, you'll see right here. That's what it snapped into. Those all along there. So you'll have to snap each one out of there. Then you can take a keyboard and flip it over. And then you're going to want to release these ribbon cables. You get three of them. This one is a uh, keyboard that lights up so you want to take all these cables and disconnect them from the motherboard okay so the way these small ribbon cables are in there you just uh, pry up on this connector a little bit and they will release out of there you can alternate you can uh, Prop on one side, then prop on the other side, and eventually the ribbon cable will come right out. Okay, it's the same with the this ribbon cable. You just pry up on this uh, either side, and then the ribbon cable will release. That's all that holds it. Alright, once you got the keyboard out, you're going to want to take all these 
ZIF connectors here. One, two, three there. One here. One here. And pop the cables out of those. Okay, to get that top cover off, there's a bunch of torch bit screws that need to be removed. There's three on the side here. There's some in the uh, hard drive area. There's these here. And basically remove all these. Here, here, here. Just look around. And, uh, battery area here, some more. Just remove all those Torx bit screws. And then the top cover will come off. Okay, so all up till now, the screws have been captured. All these little screws are captured. Uh, the Torx bit screws, the little tiny ones, are not captured. So you may want to have a magnet handy where you can uh, kind of pick them out of there. Just make sure to keep this away from your hard drive. Okay, so these screws are all different sizes, so you kind of want to keep them in place where you took them out. So these three, there, these four were in this area when the computer flipped over. Then you got these little ones, bunch over here. I lined them up and then some in the back. So <clears throat> now that I got all the screws removed, I can just take this top cover off. And there we go. So if you needed to replace your touchpad or something, you can do that easily now. There's your touchpad. Or these buttons up here. Or the power button. It's all exposed. Now we're getting down to the guts of it. Okay, <clears throat> so next you're going to take out two screws out of the fan assembly. Or three. One here, one here. You may have a screw over here. This one does not have a screw there. And then this is your video card here. So take those four out and here is a CPU. Take those, just uh, loosen all four of these. And then <clears throat> all these heat sinks will lift off of there. Make sure you remove this water here too. There you go, the whole heat sink comes out. And there's gonna be some thermal paste on the bottom of that that you're gonna to wanna to replace with fresh thermal paste. So one for the video card and one for the CPU. And there they are, there's your CPU and your video card. Yeah, this is the I believe this is the video card here. This is the CPU. So you just get your CPU out and you just turn that screw and then it'll lift out. And make sure you align, when you put your new one in, just align the pin. There's a little triangle in that corner. Make sure you put the triangle in the same spot. All right, that's probably a good thing that I'm changing the CPU out because this paste on here is really dried up and crunchy. So after when it gets like that, it doesn't transfer the heat as good. Okay, so with this Elite book, I'm changing the CPU from a dual core to a quad core. You can see the difference in the heat sink there. And this one, because it was an option for quad core, the uh, heat sink is sized up for the quad core CPU. So you want to check for that to make sure your heat sink's the right size. There you go. So I got the new CPU in there. All I got to do is turn this screw, and it's going to tighten everything up. 